would you just look at that? You learn something new every day. How many times have I defrosted these evaporators and fought with this? It goes to show you. I'm an idiot just like the rest of them. This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. This is insane. I don't think I've ever seen a walk-in freezer iced up this bad. So they said the box hasn't ran since before yesterday, right? And they called me last night at like 1030 and said, yeah, my fans aren't running. And I was like, well, I'm not coming out because you guys waited all day. So it's now Saturday um, and I'm here and I come in here. I can hear the system running. But the ice is built up so thick that it's up to the fan blade, up to the fan blade, and this one isn't. So we got to open it up and see why the evaporator fan motors aren't running. This is nuts. Yeah, this is crazy, man. I'm wondering if it like severed the power wire. The ice is definitely up to this blade completely. This one doesn't look like the ice is necessarily up to the blade. And this one, there's just big chunks of ice behind it. So we got to open it up. Uh, this is a Heatcraft QRC system, or and we're getting an A1, which I believe is a high room temp. Yeah, high room temp A1 alarm. And I can hear the condensing unit cycling on and off. Lucky they don't wash out the oil on that compressor because it's been running without these evaporator fan motors. All right, I'm going to get some hot water, get this powered down. We got to get this defrosted. Get some pans down here to try to catch the water because there is going to be some dripping water and then uh, try to figure out what's going on here all right this is the worst evaporator i've ever seen as far as being iced up uh, this is nuts and like i just had a discussion with the manager guarantee this has been iced up for more than a month and from the looks of it this motor stopped first and then what I'm thinking happened is it probably severed the electrical connection that feeds all three of these. Or actually, I think it comes from over here. No, yeah, the electrical connection comes from over here and then it goes here, here, and here. And I bet you anything we severed the electrical connection and it shut down all three fans. I've never seen one iced up like this. This is insane. It's all the way back into here and it goes all the way behind the coil like it's just bonkers holy majoli all right uh i use hot water to melt the ice on my evaporators no torches i don't wait for electric defrost or anything like that the first thing we're going to do in getting this defrosted obviously can't get these motors out can't even get this one out because it's all encapsulated in ice um is we're going to tackle down here making sure that the drain is clear once we get the drain clear if it's not already then we'll start at the top and start going, but we wanna make sure that water has somewhere to go. So we'll focus on the drain and the drain pan and then build our way up and slowly start defrosting this. I can't stress enough that even though I'm frustrated that I'm here, even though I can tell that it's been down for a long time, even though they told me yesterday that they noticed the fans weren't working in the morning, but they didn't call me until 10.30 at night, like all of that frustrates me, but I, it's my job. I'm here to fix it. So bite my tongue, you know, some frustrations. It, it is what it is, right? I mean, it's a service call. So it's inevitable we're going to get them and that's my job, All right? Yeah, it's a little frustrating, but I don't vent that frustration. I explain and I educate, okay? Um, so as far as defrosting it, it's not a race. Take your time. I got the drain to start draining and I noticed that there was a lot of stuff coming out of it. I got it to start breaking free. So I, I'm paying attention to the drain pan. When the drain pan starts to fill up like this, see it's almost full, I stop, let it drain, then continue defrosting. This is gonna be a long, slow process. It is what it is. Let's not make a huge mess on the floor or anything like that. We're gonna do everything we can to keep the water contained to the drain pan and these buckets. This is gonna be a long day. <laughs> I've got service calls stacked to the max too, but one thing at a time, right? As I'm getting this motor defrosted, I realize the bracket's broken and the wires are severed. Just to this motor. Good gosh, so we know we need one motor. I don't know when I'm gonna find a bracket, but hopefully they got one, we'll see. This keeps getting better and better. So uh, this bracket's broken too. Hopefully I can find all these parts on a Saturday. It's gonna be fun. 
but we're almost, we got this one defrosted, this one defrosted. So we're just working on this last one and then we gotta get all the ice on the back side. It's kind of crazy and then we'll get into the electrical section over here too. This motor wire severed too. I wonder why this one wasn't working though. I wonder, I don't see any damage down there necessarily. It's interesting. All right, I just need to pop my head back there, but I'm 99% sure I got all the ice taken care of all the way on the back side. You can see this is just what came off the back. So that's how thick it was coming out the back, and then it was the entire coil all the way to here. So at least 15 inches of ice solid all the way through. Kind of crazy. Got this side all defrosted, got real careful around the transformer because I didn't want to just saturate that thing. Um, if you don't already know the electrical thing just two screws and the thing just kind of pivots out of the way so yeah now we need to figure out why that fan motor is not working because I don't see any wires that are severed for that I'm wondering if the coil is just not cold enough because it was so iced up like it wasn't getting down to like 20 degrees or whatever so therefore the fan motor wouldn't turn on it's a question we need to fire it up and see if we can get it to energize all right so get back here to the back of the coil looks good there's some plastic in the drain pan. It's gonna be hard for you guys to see, so I'll get that out. But it got it all defrosted back in here. We should be good. So now I need to start making some phone calls, see if I can find some parts, and then turn it on and see why that other motor's not working. This big chunk is just what was on the back, just hanging off the back. And then, like I said earlier, it came all the way through that coil to the front. <laughs> it's just crazy. All right, at this point, I um, kind of got everything cleaned up. I'm going to take this last pan out, and I'm going to flip the breaker on and see if the coil gets cold enough and maybe this motor turns on. We'll find out if that one's bad, too. So we have 208 volts at the motor connection right there. This one right here seems like it's plugged in, but when I move it, it makes buzzing, popping sounds in the motor. So... I'm not going to trust this motor. We may even have a bad electrical connection down here, but with everything going on here, I'm going to see if I can get three new motors, um, three new brackets. I would like to get fan guards too, because these fan guards busted coming off. All the things broke off, but I don't know if I can get those on a Saturday. So it's time to make some uh, phone calls now. All right, I am back. Um, I got three new blades, three new fan brackets three new fan motors and three new fan guards it's crazy because these ones like i said were all busted broken so as i'm pulling this motor out i realized why it was making the buzzing sound because it's broken right here too so we'll pop this out and yeah that's why it was making a buzzing sound because it's icing up and it's ripping those connections off it's crazy the power of ice, right? I really, really appreciate though how they have the part numbers on here. Um, it makes my life a lot easier. So what I typically do is I went to all my suppliers' websites because I have active user logins for all of them and I'm able to see which supply house has all the parts instead of making phone calls and waiting, you know, I just look and because I have all the part numbers right here. So that was awesome. Putting everything in and I just had like a, epiphany I don't know I was uh, over 14,000 days old when I realized that these fan motor guards have a recess spot for this retainer nut and then a non recess spot for the other side I don't know that I've ever noticed that before so there's actually a direction I'm pretty sure that I've struggled putting these on before huh well I guess I can look at the old ones yeah look at that would you just look at that? You learn something new every day. How many times have I defrosted these evaporators and fought with this? Goes to show you, I'm an idiot just like the rest of them. Wow, it is alive and running now. Um, I'm gonna leave everything off for the moment. I need to see it turn on and I wanna get my eyes on the condensing unit, make sure it's running with a clear sight glass. So we're gonna hop up onto the roof, wait for it to turn on. All right, my system is running now and the sight glass is clear. Now, I'm making a, a, an assumption, an educated guess, that I don't see the need to put service gauges on this guy. Um, condenser doesn't look dirty. I really don't see the need because of how it was iced up. Um, 
Uh, I think everything's going to be fine. We're running with a clear sight glass. Signs aren't pointing me to a refrigerant related issue. So we're going to go downstairs and make sure it comes down in temp a little bit. I just walked around their roof and uh, checked all the ACs, looked for codes in the circuit boards, didn't see anything, made sure all the exhaust fans are running. I'm, I have a habit of doing this because this customer doesn't do routine maintenance and I can't keep up with the crazy service calls. So when I'm on site, I go walking around, just making sure there's no other issues and I bring it to their attention because it's gonna be my problem late at night, you know, and I'd rather find it during the day and try to remedy it before it becomes something like this walk-in freezer. So it's already getting really cold in here, so we're just gonna go through the program. It's set up for electric defrost. Refrigerant type should be 404. Box temp should be negative 10. Superheat should be about six, seven, okay. Slave, no. Demand defrost, is it on? No, okay. Uh, DFN, what is that? Defrost per day, four. We're gonna change that to six because they're clearly causing problems here. Uh, DFF, I think that's a fail safe temp, 30. DF, uh, no, that's time, 30 minute defrost. DFT is the temp, 55, yeah. DFS, nothing, all right, cool. So everything looks good on that. So I don't know why it pumped down. Did I put it into a, I think I might've put it into something when I was going through the programming or something. So we gotta wait for it to turn back on, make sure there's nothing wrong because it's actually just pumping down right now. What I did was I changed the defrost to six a day and it actually must have been the time for the defrost because it actually went into defrost. But that's actually a good thing because it gives me the opportunity to get in here and put my amp clamp on all the heaters just to make sure all the defrost heaters are working. So, All right, this thing has a bunch of defrost heaters. So the one actually in the drain pan is 1.75. The one at the bottom of the coil is 1.5. The next one up in the coil is 2.8 and the one at the top of the coil is three amps so all the defrost heaters are working i don't see any problems there so let's get it taken out of defrost and back and running now all right we are back and running it's coming down to temp I'm getting out of here and on to the next one i can't stress enough that i was extremely frustrated like that one pushed me to my max because i could clearly tell that that was probably iced up for more than a month like and it, it it just dumbfounds me, right? But at the same time, excuse my dog, he's chilling back here behind me. But, um, you know, I get it. These restaurants are just having a hard time, you know? So it's so important that even though my frustrations are through the roof that I bite my tongue, okay? I'm not going to blow up on the customer because guess what? It's a really simple decision for them. Call me or call another company. It's as easy as that. Okay. And if I'm fine with that, then sure. I could blow up on them. They could fire me as a company, as a contractor and I'll never do work for them again. Okay. Or I can bite my tongue. I can try to educate them. You know, I can try There's a, there's a new manager here and I, I explained everything to him and he seemed like, wow. Okay. You know, and I explained and he's only been there for a couple of weeks and you know, these restaurants have high turnover right now. They're going through managers. They're going through kitchen staff, you know, all that different stuff. So why was this freezer iced up in the first place? Honestly, I think it just started with maybe one of those fan motors going bad. I don't I don't know if it was a fan motor going bad as much as I think maybe them just leaving a door open. Um, these customers, they do that. They constantly leave doors open. And I know everybody out there is going to comment in the YouTube comments and everywhere. Why don't you put door switches? Why don't you put door alarms? I try. Okay, I try to bring it up to them. They don't want that kind of stuff. Um, why? I don't know. Okay, um, but I will tell you that in the past when I have installed door alarms, I've installed audible alarms, I'll go back and there's just duct tape over the alarm. Okay, the kitchen staff just puts duct tape over it. In the management of these restaurants, just casual dining in general is having such a hard time keeping up on the restaurants because these managers half the time are in the kitchen cooking, right? They're, they're not out doing their job, which is running the restaurant, checking on customer satisfaction, you know, being a face to the restaurant. They're not even doing that half the time because they're stuck in the kitchen cooking, you know? Um, I still get frustrated, right? I know, and I know we all have frustrations, but vent Find, find a group of people, find a, find a good core group of friends, vent to them, 
right? Vent your frustrations to them, bite your tongue. So that way that restaurant, that customer keeps calling you back. And I know it's really easy for people to say, well, you know what? I don't want them as a customer anymore. That That is a decision that you can make, right? When you're a business owner, that is a hard decision to make. That is a really hard decision because that particular customer feeds your family, right? They keep you employed. They give your kids a college fund. They, you know, they help you as a business. And in turn, you need to help them, right? By educating them, by fixing their problems, right? And billing for them accordingly. Yeah, you need to bill accordingly. I build accordingly. If I told you how much this job cost, it's pretty darn ridiculous, okay? It's absolutely insane. In fact, I'd kind of like for you guys in the comments to guess how much you think this job ended up costing the customer. And unfortunately, it cost them more in materials than it did in labor. But my labor rates are still high when it's on overtime. It was a rather expensive bill. So let me know in the comments what you think. I'm not going to say it, but I, I just kind of curious what y'all think this cost the customer for a Saturday service call changed three OEM Heatcraft fan motors, fan blades, fan guards, um, and just melted a lot of ice. Okay. So another thing I wanted to cover too, you know, why don't I use a blowtorch? Why don't I use a heat gun? Why don't I use a pump sprayer? Why don't I use just the electric defrost? I know there's so many different people that say, I just turn it in defrost and come back six hours later. Okay. That's fine. That may work for you. That's not how I do things. No judgment. If someone else uses a torch, if someone else does it a different way than I, that's fine. I like to be efficient. I like to be as fast as possible, okay? Um, there's times, you know, that that uh, blowing or that uh, using a torch or using the electric defrost is going to slowly melt it and maybe it'll drain down the drain. But what happens if the drain pan's plugged up? When you use a water hose, you're doing two things. You're melting the ice, but then also you're filling that drain pan up faster than it'll ever fill up. And it should drain pretty quick. And if it doesn't, there's a problem there. So kind of killing two birds with one stone. If you're using a map gas torch or an oxyacetylene torch, the products of combustion are going to fill that space extremely quick. And there's potential that you could get carbon monoxide poisoning from doing that. So be very cautious about using torches. Um, I have a, a good friend of mine, Brett Wetzel from the Advanced Refrigeration Podcast. He was telling me a story when he was still new in the trade. Someone was using a giant roofing torch to meld an industrial um, evaporator, right? Those big, giant propane roofing torches. And he was using that to melt it. And he got it so hot, it set off a fire sprinkler in there. And fire sprinklers, they put out a lot of water. It was so scary that he said, the, the story, I'm not trying to steal his story. You go, Brett, I'm sure we'll elaborate more. But he said, when it set it off, all that they heard was a hissing sound because the lines are filled with air. It's not water right at the sprinkler in the particular situation he was working on. So they heard the air hissing out and they like realized, oh no, what's about to come? And then whoosh, water coming down, okay? So be very cautious using torches, heat guns. Um, I've tried using heat guns in the past, you know, working on equipment, like a, and you get bored because it takes forever. So you like prop it up and then I've come back and it like fell down and melted a bunch of wires and plastic and Water's not that bad as long as you pull the motors out. I highly suggest you always pull motors out, set them down, um, defrost it, and then just put it back together, right? It, it, it's just a routine for me anymore. I've got all the tools. I know that for this particular job, to defrost that evaporator, you need a half-inch ratchet wrench to pull the fan guards off. Then once you get those off, you need a eighth inch Allen wrench to pull the fan blade off. Once you pull that out, then you just move the fan brackets out, pull the motors out, set them to the side. Like I have like a routine when I do these things. It's kind of just like grab those five tools, you know, knock it out. So I just can't stress enough that even though we get frustrated, even though this is our family time, guess what? It's our job. Okay. So just bite your tongue make the customer happy, fix it, try to educate them as best as possible, and then move on to the next one, okay? I really do appreciate you all. If you haven't already, please consider checking out my website, hvacrvideos.com, okay? Um, lots of great merchandise available on there. It's a great way to help support the channel if you're interested in doing so. This hat's available, the shirt's available. Um, you can support the channel via Patreon, PayPal, YouTube channel memberships. The easiest way to support the channel is simply just watch the video from beginning to end without skipping through anything. Let YouTube pay me. That's the easiest way, okay? Thank you so very much for your time, and uh, we will catch you on the next one, okay?